Righto, Taliadi Camp, Sol Goodman here, and 28 gig or 216 gig, which one should you do? We're going to discuss that in this video, whether 8 gigs is enough, or you should get the 16 gig M1 MacBook Air or MacBook Pro or Mac Mini, whichever. And make sure you do subscribe because I'm going to have a full Q&A on these M1 Macs and I've slammed these things so I know quite a bit about them. And the reason I made this video is because I got asked so many times in the comments. I'll also answer some other questions I get in the comments as well that I see frequently popping up. But let's just stick to the matter at hand here. Now I've slammed these M1 Macs every which way from Sunday. You know, the MacBook Pro 8 gig, the MacBook Air 8 gig. And I have not seen them slow down at all. And I've been doing some serious stuff, right? I'm not talking about muck about stuff. I'm talking about some serious stuff, you know. 6K, ProRes RAW, 6K, HEVC, mixture of frame rates, mixture of codecs, H.264, H.265, with, as I said, ProRes chucked in there as well. And Wolf, these laptops handled that no problem. This is all in Final Cut. There are some areas where I've seen some slowdown. Remember, these are both 8 gigs, these ones I'm talking about. Now, most of the times I've seen slowdown, all the computer hicking up is mostly when I've been using a lot of apps and there've been Intel apps among those apps that I've been using. That's the only time I've seen these things slow down. I have also seen them slow down in Final Cut Pro when I do some color grading, like to the 6K ProRes RAW, when I add a lot and some color grading onto that. And remember, these are 10-bit files as well. Also, when I've added some titles and transitions. The transitions is where I've seen the frames drop. And I'll try and explain to why I think those slowdowns are happening. But here's the thing I'll say straight away. If you're just doing normal computing, the MacBook Air, even with the seven GPUs versus the eight, the MacBook Air base model is more than enough. And I'm gonna just put it out there I think these new M1 Macs perform with 8 gigabytes like an Intel laptop with 16 gigabytes. I've been checking my usage the whole time when I've been doing stuff, you know, lots of apps open, video editing, stuff like that. I have been constantly in swap, and if you don't know what swap is, that's when your Mac or computer's trying to do one of two things. Either whatever it's trying to do, there's not enough RAM, so it has to put stuff to the hard drive, or it's trying to put stuff on the hard drive to free up RAM for you. They're not quite the same thing, but even though it's been in swap super fast, and this is because of the unified memory and the storage controller you have on these Macs. It's all custom and it's all built to work together. With Apple Silicon, now you've got unified memory, so you're basically getting GPU memory on your CPU now because this is high bandwidth memory. It's right next to the CPU, direct connection. So there's two reasons that's good. One, it's high bandwidth. Usually your CPU does not get the high bandwidth memory that GPUs get. Now it does. Also, because it's unified memory, the GPU can use as much RAM as it needs or wants. And this is where I think I'm getting that slow down playback in Final Cut. If you just think about Final Cut or video editing machines like my MacBook Pro 16, I have 32 gigs because actually 16 was still not quite there. With all the stuff I do, 32 gigs is the sweet spot. I don't run into swap then. But my MacBook Pro 16 has 8 gigabytes of memory just for the video. So that graphics card has 8 gigs. Now usually in an integrated system, you might get 1, 2 gigabytes for your video card. You know, the system will allocate that much for your integrated graphics. This is where I think the slowdown happens. If you've only got 8 gigs of RAM, so the graphics in the M1 Max with 8 gigs, if your video editing, I doubt they're giving you 4 gigs just for your video card. And I think you need that. So the rule of thumb with video memory is the amount of K your footage is, that's how much video memory you need. So you've got 4K footage, you need 4 gigs RAM on your video card. You've got 6K footage, you need 6 gigs RAM. That's the sort of rule of thumb. It's hard to give your video card 6 gigs of RAM if you've only got 8. So I think video editing, if you're going to be using titles, you're going to be using you know more than 4K, you're going to be using transitions, color grading, all that sort of stuff. Yes, the 16 gigs is worth it. So then when you're video editing, your graphics card can use four, six gigabytes, eight gigabytes, whatever it needs. Whereas if you've got eight gigs, it's going to be limited to sort of, you know, you've got your other apps running, you've got your video editor, you know, the CPU needs so much, the system needs so much, and then whatever's left over, your video card will get, right? So at the end of the day, when it comes to RAM, if you can afford it, get it, get the extra RAM. Honestly, if you're just doing H.264, H.265, 4K, 8 gigs is more than enough with these new Macs. 
considering how well optimized they are. If you're doing something more heavy duty, I doubt you're gonna be using one of these MacBook Pros or MacBook Airs. Like I use 6K video, maybe for me, yes, 16 gigs makes more sense. But for general computing, just editing 4K, H.264, H.265, you're gonna have no problems with eight gigs. It performs like 16 gigs on an Intel system. So that's the way I see it. Of course, there will be caveats to this. You wanna be running native apps. You don't wanna be running Intel apps because that's going to just mess with it because that will just slow you down also you know your mileage may vary there may be something you do where you need the extra ram but on the most part from everything i've slammed it with and i'm even talking gaming usually 16 gigs is what you want for gaming the gaming i'm doing on this with 8 gigs is just wow and to answer some of the other questions is are they ready for prime time? No. I cannot use my audio interface. I cannot use a lot of my plugins. Just beware of that. you got to look all that up. I could not use it personally myself as my main production machine because of those plugins and my audio interface doesn't work. Should you get a 16 gig MacBook Air or an 8 gig MacBook Pro? I would go to 16 gig MacBook Air and I wouldn't even worry about having extra cores. The seven core base model is perfectly fine. I've done a lot of videos on that, the gaming video comparing the two. Check that out. But I would rather have a 16 gig MacBook Air rather than an eight gig MacBook Pro. Other than that, if you do have any other questions, leave them in the comments because I will be doing a Q and A. So anyway, I just thought I'd quickly chuck up this video. A lot of people asking me, that's my thoughts on it. Catch you in the next one guys, tally ho.